Hey everybody, so this research paper is called Beyond Backpropagation, Exploring Innovative Algorithms for Energy Efficient Deep Neural Network Training, and it's put out by AGH University of Science and Technology out of Krakow, Poland. It's put out by like one singular student. Normally I wouldn't go over a research paper like this, but what they're going over is uh, very straightforward and then it's also an interesting uh, conglomeration of algorithms that uh, people have a lot of questions around generally so this is like a good resource paper to me overall that uh, essentially groups all three of these algorithms together and then so what it does is and what it goes over is um, alternatives to back propagation right and then so i'll break the down the paper down in kind of more simplistic terms and then so think of modern ai as a super smart student to get that smart it has to study massive amounts of data a process called training and the problem is, is that the main way we've been training AI for decades is a method called backpropagation. It's very energy intensive and very mathematically intensive. So training a single large AI can use as much electricity as several households do in a year and leave a carbon footprint equivalent to a car's entire lifetime. This research paper explores a simple but powerful question. Is there a better, more energy efficient way to teach AI without sacrificing performance? This research paper breaks it down all into the uh, actual energy costs of the, the this equation, which is very true, right? And I don't want to minimize that at all, but there's also like the uh, computational costs, the GP, like the fact that you need massive GPUs and multiple GPUs, uh, et cetera, right? So it's more than just like the, the actual costs of these things that, that go into it. And then so the old way of teaching or back propagation. So imagine a teacher giving a huge complex exam to a student. This is everything that goes on within that process, right? First, you have a forward pass where the student works through the entire exam from beginning to end writing down all of their answers. Then you have a backward pass. So the teacher takes the completed exam, starts from the very last question and works backwards, marking every single answer. For each mistake, the teacher makes a note of how the student went wrong. This requires remembering everything the student did on the forward pass. Then as a third step, you have the update. So the teacher gives the giant list of corrections back to the student who then adjusts their thinking to do a better next time. And then so like uh, each one of these adds mathematical complexity and then so therefore GPU complexity, right? Like when like, so for this, it's not that computationally expensive. For this, like, like if we're breaking this down, this is like 20% of the equation. This is like 40% uh, of the equation. And then this is 40% of the equation. <laughs> it's kind of how it breaks down. Like, I guess it would be like, uh, this would be like 35 and this would be 45. Like, and then like, but this is the, the lowest, right? And then so this method backpropagation works really well, but it has a big drawbacks. First of all, it utilizes high amounts of energy and memory usage. Remembering remembering every step of the forward pass to do the backward pass uses a ton of computer memory and energy. And that's kind of where it comes in, right? Because you have to remember every single step of the forward pass when you're doing it in the backward pass. So you have to have like double the amount of compute available that you had on the forward pass. So this, and then when you do that, apply the update, same thing, right? You have to hold it in there. So a bottleneck is, is that you can't start correcting until the whole exam is finished. This creates a backward looking problem that slows things down. This paper investigates three new back propagation free training methods that try to fix these problems. And then, so they go over essentially three challenger algorithms, right? And the first one they, they propose is it's the Ford Ford, Ford algorithm. And this one is, is proposed by Jeffrey Hinton. And this method gets rid of the backward pass, uh, pass completely. Instead of one big exam, each layer of the AI's brain is trained on a simple local task, telling the di difference between a real piece of data, like a picture or of a cat with the correct label and a fake one, like the same picture with the wrong label. So kind of the verdict on this one though, is that 
uh, it's a fascinating idea, but uh, practical failure. And I'll show you, I'll show you all three of these algorithms here and give you all the code, right? So the research confirmed that feed uh, forward forward can learn and get the right answers. However, it's incredibly slow and inefficient. It took four to 13 times longer and used three to times more energy than back propagation and it's it performs worse right so it like it uh doesn't solve any problems and then we have challenger number two which is CAFO, the cascaded forward algorithm and then so this method is more structured like an assembly line the ai is built in blocks and each block has its own little quality control inspector called a predictor that learns to make a prediction based on the information it has so far. And then, so this one has mixed results, right? Like it's like a, so like a kind of like a Alice eating porridge, right? This one, the first one was too hot. This one's a little bit too cold. And then, so uh, reason being for this one is, is that uh, this version was, so there's two versions of it, right? There's CAFO with uh, random blocks and CAFO with pre-trained blocks. And the CAFO with, with random blocks, it was super fast, used about 19% less energy than back propagation on one complex task. The fact the the bottom line is 13% more accurate, right? So uh, far more computationally efficient, like but uh, less accurate with this setup, with this setup here. Uh, this version was much more accurate, almost as good as backpropagation overall. The problem, the pre-training process was so energy intensive that it ended up using four times more energy overall. So CAFO shows the ability and the quality, that quality of the features learned by each block is critical, but it doesn't quite solve the energy versus accuracy puzzle. And in my test, and again, I'll show you the, the, the full code here, right? The, the, uh, this model like outperformed all three of them, but it was four, it was like four times slower, right? five times slower. And then so like flat out like this, my, my research and, and like my tests on this and 100% uh, back up the research paper, right? And you can experiment with it yourself as well. And then so challenger number three is the mono forward algorithm or the MF algorithm. And then so the idea is that this is the newest and most refined method. So like the others, it learns locally layer by layer. The key innovation is giving each layer a special tool, which is a projection matrix that allows it to directly understand the final goal and calculate its own local error without needing negative samples. Like uh, like forward forward or complex predictors like the CAFO algorithm. And then so the verdict here is it's a major breakthrough for certain AI models. So like, cause it's only, we're only, I'll show you the test here, right? It's uh, only testing on MLP models. And then we, I test it with a classifier. So a classifier connected to MLP, uh, multi-layer perceptrons. So for the common type of AI brain it was designed for or MLPs, uh, MF was a clear winner. And then so it was more accurate. It consistently scored the same as or even slightly better than back propagation. The paper suggests that this is because it's layer by layer learning finds a smarter, more efficient path to the correct answer. It's way more efficient on the most complex data set. MF trained 34% faster and used 41% less energy than back propagation. This translates directly to a smaller carbon footprint and lower costs. And then so, uh, again, all of this was trained via, like I trained it via classifier and, and um, MLP. They And here they train it via MLP and classifier uh, and then in their tests. And then like, uh, but so none of this has been scaled to like uh, transformers. But my assumption is, is that transformers would be um, mirroring these same results, but none of us test on that. I don't test it because of GPU. And so assume it's the same for them. And so how is this proven? Uh, Verify framework. A key contribution of this paper is it's an extremely rigorous testing method. To make sure the comparisons were fair, the researcher did the following for every test. They used identical brains, they tuned to perfection, and they used real world measurements. Uh, and then so just kind of diving deeper and, and diving over to the code here. And then so this is the full notebook of their, uh, like based off of their code and are off of their research paper. And then so it's beyond back propagation. And then so it's the three algorithms, right? The forward forward, the CAFO and the MF. And then we have a baseline of just a straight back propagation. And then so you can adjust the data set. So this is adjustable here, right? You go here, you can pick your data set. Uh, whichever one that you want, and then algorithms to run all or just one batch size, like a number of epochs, et cetera, right? So you can adjust everything that you, you would like here. And then you have the three different algorithms set up for the algorithms and then the three different algorithms. 
Uh, and then we have our training after that, train and evaluate here. Uh, and then so as you can see here, here's the run. So here's the baseline of our back propagation. So ran for five epochs and we got 87% accuracy overall. Uh, the forward forward, which is the Hinton one. Uh, and then so like uh, value accuracy is what we want to compare to, right? Just pointing that out here. And then so the training accuracy numbers are quite low here, but the value accuracy is are, are quite low, uh, still lower than, than uh, beat the, the back propagation baseline, which again, backs up their research overall. But then we get, uh, we, so it's 75% is what it ends up with, 76%, we'll call it, with the test accuracy uh, as opposed to 87%. So this is far more like it's like a lot more energy efficient, but then also a lot less accurate. Right. And then so the second one, it gets 90 percent like so like with the the uh, like the, the cream of the crop. Right. Like the, the but as you can see here, if you if you look at this and then and like this took um, far like it was the, the most computationally expensive one by like five X. Uh, and then it, it's squeezing out, it, we got 87.36 on this and then 90.66 on this. And then so like you're squeezing out an extra like 3.3% 3, 3 uh, for like 5X more uh, costs overall in the end. Uh, and then this is the mono forward algorithm, the third one. And then and so it gets 88 point, like 88.07 compared to the baseline of 87.36. So it beats out the baseline by like a, like, almost a full percent. Uh, and then it is like, uh, like this was the fastest one, like <laughs> four times faster, right? Um, and then uh, also to our training accuracy is, is very good uh, overall compared to the value accuracy. So like this algorithm, like it, 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 again, it's, it's the, like, like uh, comparatively, especially to this one, like it's the, this is very good, right? So mono forward is the, the like, if you are wondering and, and wanting to go with like, what's the, uh, best algorithm that currently exists right now uh, for uh, like a replacement algorithm for back propagation, it would be this one, this mono forward, right? And then so again, you just go back up here. This is the mono forward algorithm here, right? So you have, you can see the, the algorithm here and then do anything that you want with it and play around with it, right? Um, and then so um, I'll leave a link to the research paper as well as this collab notebook and this document here. Uh, and if there's some content overall, please like and subscribe. Thank you much.